Hey, my name is Evan, and there's been a little bit of a buzz about uh, the potential for a signal uh, coming into the Caribbean later on in the month, early August, and all of that is being caused by this guy right here, just off the coast of Africa. We got a little bit of a tropical wave entering into the Atlantic, but just how legit is this signal as it comes closer to the Caribbean? Is there any validity to this? What's going on in the Atlantic? Are the ocean temperature is hot enough? What are the sheer environment going to be like? What are the models saying? We're going to kind of dive into that, give you guys a little bit of a better answer with a short video here. So let's go ahead and get started. But before we do, hit that like and subscribe button and let's get into it. First thing I want to point out is that this right here is Africa. Okay, so this thing's got a while before it even makes it into the Caribbean or even a while before we can even start talking about, you know, potential United States impacts. It's just not something that we can do right now. It's outside of the capability of our tools in terms of meteorology to tell you guys what's going to be happening that far into the future. But I mean, here it is. It's there. I mean, there's a wave. It is entering the Atlantic. But I just wanted to kind of calm some fears that, you know, there's still a lot of uncertainty about this storm. So there's nothing set in stone, but we're going to try to tell you as much as we can. One of the reasons I'm even talking about this in the first place is because there actually is some signals out there. According to some models, we have the European, European ensemble models, uh, you know, showing that we got a little bit of a highlighted area over here in the Caribbean for some tropical activity within the seven to 10 day time frame. Something could form in that region. And, um, and yeah, so we're going to try to get ahead of it. You know, we can also see that we have a post here by the NWS Melbourne as well, highlighting a 20% chance of development after July 31st. We even have this model here uh, that indicates that some low pressure systems, this is kind of an ensemble, so it's kind of showing different scenarios. So we have multiple low pressure systems on this ensemble. And you can see that there is, you know, some agreement here, of, at least between the ensembles here on the ECENS ensemble, uh, that we have a couple of systems try to form here. So, you know, uh, we'll have to see which one of these becomes the the one that, you know, the 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 scenario, we should say, um, that is actually going to happen. But, you know, just according to this model, that could be like a tropical depression or a tropical storm. We'll have to see because, you know, again, the intensities are going to be a little bit, you know, weird and all that kind of stuff. So we really want to just kind of focus on, you know, what is the probability of anything forming at this point? But you can see that there is initially, you know, some support for a signal, you know, as we get into the kind of the early portions of August of something forming. So looking at the EPS ensemble here, you can see that, you know, we kind of have not a whole lot happening in the tropics, no kind of lighter blues or greens really showing up, maybe something over there near the Yucatan Peninsula, we might have to watch out for in the near future. But at, at, towards the end of this model run, you can see that we start to see back that up you can see that we do by the time we get to around july 31st a signal does pop up also on the eps model so you know starting to build some consensus here of a weak system that is trying to develop at some time around this time frame near the lesser antilles now the american model ensembles are kind of painting a weaker picture here it is also picking up on that little system potentially uh over here somewhere that this is most likely a gyre or you know a, a very weak tropical system then over here you can see we have a little bit of a slight signal there that something a lowering of pressure could develop in this area so you know it's not overly confident you know on something forming but it's something to keep an eye out we do have some general support though at least in the models and the ensembles that something could form over there we just don't know the intensity of what it's going to be but yeah you know it's definitely something to continue to monitor to see if it does turn into anything now you know given that this is a weak system one of the very important factors that we need to be looking at here is the shear. I mean, if there's just too much shear in the area, it will rip the storm apart. You know, when you start to see a signal like this, then that means nothing's happening in the Caribbean. That's just too much shear. It's going to shear anything. You know, you add in some of that dust from the Sahara there, you're just not getting anything happen uh, with a signal like this. But as this is the 29th here, but as we move into the 30th and then the 31st, you can see that right around where that pressure, that lower pressure tries to form 
form, you can see we do have a weakening of shear at that time. So again, this is going to be a main factor. If that, if that, you know, that shear, that you know, the the thing that keeps these storms from really doing anything is going to be in place, then we're really not going to see much happen. But you know, we got to mon monitor this trend in particular for this potential system as we go into the future, as this will be a big driving factor on whether or not this thing actually forms or if it's just some scattered showers for the Caribbean. Another thing we look at, obviously, is sea surface temperatures. And as you can see, you know, you want something above 27 degrees uh, to sustain tropical activity. And as we get closer to the Lesser Antilles, areas like Puerto Rico, you can see that the ocean temperatures are ready uh, for a system to come into this area as there's going to be plenty of fuel from the ocean temperatures for this storm. So definitely something to keep an eye on if that shear relaxes and a low pressure system does actually form in this area as it is pretty hot and abnormally hot. Last and certainly not least is going to be the amount of dust that's going to be existing when this potential storm starts to form. And uh, yeah, you can see, let me kind of pause it to that time frame, at least with the one that we're looking at, which is going to be, you know, July 31st or August 1st here. And you can see right in that area, there's actually going to be a decent amount of dust. So that's going to de definitely play a role in suppressing this storm's ability to really do anything. Uh, so that's a trend we're going to have to monitor. This is a forecast here for the dust. You can also see we have some dust, you know, entering into the United States at around this time as well. So this could be our saving grace here with this storm. Definitely a decent amount there, you know, with a weaker system, you know, it, it's going to have to battle all of that dust in order to really be able to form any thunderstorms in the first place. You can kind of consider it as like a little bit of a capping inversion that is going to be in place, some drier air, um, maybe some warmer air above the surface that could keep those thunderstorm activity to a minimum, which would, you know, help keep the pressure of the storm a little bit higher, which is a good thing. You know, you don't want a low pressure with any of these tropical systems. But I mean, yeah, overall, um, you know, overall, what are my thoughts on this storm? You know, I, I, I think it's a little bit too early to tell. I think there's a couple signals that we have to watch. We have to watch the dust forecasts. We, I mean, the ocean temperatures are going to be there. We have to watch the, uh, the shear forecast as as well and um and yeah you know we just kind of kind of watch in general what this system ends up doing. You know, we see a lot of convection. It's battling that drier, you know, dusty air earlier on, and it kind of forms a little bit earlier than expected. Then that's something that we need to put into, you know, the uh, the scenarios there. But overall, is this a storm to be freaking out about? No, it is not. It's just too early to tell any real definites about this. I just wanted to get out ahead of everybody that might, you know, have some more nefarious purposes in mind in trying to freak you out. But, uh, but yeah, that's my analysis of everything. Thank you guys for watching and again don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you did enjoy this little video and i'll see you guys on the next one